Good morning, good morning at all. Um, happy Saturday for everyone. All right, thank you for making it. Um, this, I don't know, down here is a beautiful morning, a little bit cold, but it's, you know, it's very, it's very good down here. So the weather is perfect. So um, today we're gonna go over this uh, Turio uh, Venus uh, Fistula and also Graft. Uh, the first part, I will take charts of the, of the first part. So I will go uh, over the hemodynamics and explain a little bit how this works. So I'm gonna talk about how uh, how to get the uh, volume flow rate. And uh, after this, um, Professor Darian uh, is gonna take charge and she's gonna explain a little bit more. And then after this, we're gonna be open for questions that you may have. So it's gonna take uh, one hour and we hope you learn uh, a lot today. So um, thank you for making it and let's do this. Okay, let's go here and here I have the presentation. All right, and let's begin, let's do this. All right, so uh, what is one uh, arterio veno fistula? What is this? Just basically the name tells you what's going on in here. So that's a connection between one artery and one vein and um, this could be congenital. So there are uh, basically people who are born with this. Um, I don't know if you heard about the um, arteriovenous malformation. That's a type of arteriovenous fistula, which is congenital as well. Um, look for more information about this. It's pretty interesting. And um, also it could be acquired. And when I say acquired, uh, it could be by uh, two causes in here. One is, um, by trauma and the other one is like made, you know, you heard about the hemodialysis fistulas before. So uh, like I said before, Darian is gonna uh, talk about this a little bit more later and those are acquired because they are made, all right? If the patient has um, renal insufficiency, chronic renal insufficiency, so they have to go through hemodialysis and those, uh, uh, fistulas are basically built up uh, do, by, you know, using graft. So um, what's going to happen in here, as you, as you see it, to see uh, the patient is going to have different signs and symptoms related to this. And I'm going to explain why. Uh, swelling in the arms or legs, uh, decreased blood pressure, fatigue, heart failure. But as I explain the hemodynamics of the fistula, so you're going to understand a little bit more why all of this is taking place. So what I'm gonna do is just like explain this using my style here. And um, I think you're gonna get it, all right? So think about when we talk about one fistula here, think about a letter H. So we're gonna get something like this. Think about this here. And this is going to be the arterial side right here. And this one's gonna be the venous side in here. And this connection here, it's gonna be the fistula, right? So we're gonna think about this letter H, arterial side, venous side, and then we have the connection, which is basically the fistula. Think about this, uh, the arterial side is gonna have a high pressure, right? Makes sense. And the venous side is gonna have a low pressure in here. And you know something, the flow goes from the highest pressure zone to the lowest pressure zone. And what's gonna happen is that the flow is just gonna go so fast through the fistula, right? Makes sense. Now, when you do your Doppler, um, on this area right here, you're gonna see, you know, this, if you do color, you're gonna see aliasing and color flow, which is gonna give you this mosaic appearance. Or if you place your sample volume in there, it's gonna give you the aliasing. So the pixel velocity is just gonna show uh, down um, 
is going to show below the baseline, all right, because you have a high velocity through the fistula. So that's good to know. And this is due to what? To the uh, pressure difference between the arterial side and the venous side in here. So that's good to know. So we have a very high velocity in here. And that's good, all right? If the velocity decreases over time in the fistula and the volume flow rate decreases over time in the fistula, sometimes it tells you that there is a problem in here, all right? So you have to be aware of this. So this right here, which is basically the proximal segment of the artery, all right? So this one right here. So we're gonna call it the arterial inflow, makes sense. And let me tell you something. A um, little time ago, we um, used to measure the volume flow rate at different points. Now they want to measure the volume flow rate, mostly in the flow or, or artery. So uh, anyways, Darian's going to talk a little bit more about this. All right, so it's very important to measure the volume flow rate in here. So that way you know how much flow is just going into the system, right? So this flow, all right, is going to take this path here, makes sense, because the fistula is going to work as a collateral itself, all right? But then you still have flow coming this way. So this is the arterial outflow, makes sense in here. So we have inflow here, and then we have outflow here. So it makes sense. So what's going to happen in here is something that we call a steel syndrome. So let me repeat this one more time. Steel syndrome, because as you can see it in here, the flow that is supposed to go this way, which is going, but not the amount and the volume that you're expecting. So that flow is taking this path here. It's just going this way. And then you have just a little bit of flow going this way. So just imagine the patient has this fistula at this level right here. What's going to happen is that there's not going to be the right amount of flow going to the distal part of the arm. And then the patient is going to have, you know, this, um, you know, pain, a prestigious, um, cold sensation, right? When you, like, when you touch, it's going to be cold. And this is because you're not having the right amount of flow going to the distal part of the arm it makes sense because the fistula is just what is still in this flow. So don't forget about this, you know, the arterial outflow is gonna have this still syndrome and who is the one, or what is the one that is still in this flow? Basically the fistula, it makes sense. Now, this um, proximal artery right here this proximal artery right here, this inflow, because the fistula is working as a collateral, the resistance of the system is just gonna go down. So if this is placed on the upper arm, for example, in normal conditions, the waveform of the peripheral arteries is something like this. It's triphasic, makes sense. Does in normal conditions. But when you place this fistula here, it's just going to decrease the resistance, all right, of the system. So if you do a Doppler here, which is important to do during the evaluation, so you're going to do Doppler in different points, and Darian is going to talk about this, then the waveform now is not going to be triphasic. It's going to be basically more like low resistance, monophasic above the baseline, all right? So it makes sense because the fistula is just basically decreasing the resistance of the system. Now, the outflow artery, so the pulsatility is going to maintain, makes sense. It's just like maybe the amplitude of the waveform is going to be reduced. And this is because what? Because the steel syndrome that is taking place in here. But the waveform could be triphasic or maybe you have something like biphasic like this but there will be pulsatility. But in the flow artery, the pulsatility is gonna be reduced. All right, makes sense. Remember, pulsatility goes down and resistance is going to go down. So now we know a little bit more about the arterial side, right? But here at this point, we have what we call the arterial anastomosis. 
And remember, the term anastomosis means what? Connection. So that's basically the arterial connection with the fistula, makes sense. And there's another point that we have to evaluate and check if there, any, if there is any stenosis going on. So that's good to know, all right? Of course, we have the fistula here, like I said before, we're gonna check for high volume flow rate through the fistula, which is normal, and high velocity, which is also normal, until a point. If that velocity goes so high, then you have to check for stenosis as well. So that's good to know. So there is a point, there is a classification, there is a criteria for velocity, there is a criteria for volume flow rate. And right here, if we call this one the arterial anastomosis, we have to call this one the venous anastomosis, makes sense. And uh, flow is gonna take this way right here. So of course we call this one the venous outflow. Now, let me tell you something more, all right. This venous anastomosis and the venous outflow are the ones that are gonna affect more over time. And it makes sense because remember veins, they are not designed to hold the same pressure compared to the arteries. What's gonna happen is that the high pressure from the, from the arterial side is just gonna affect the veins over time. And then this is going to develop something that we call intimal hyperplasia. All right, which is going to lead to what? To stenosis. I bet you heard about intimal hyperplasia before. It's just basically the intima is just going to start like, you know, getting thick. All right, and uh, because of this, you're gonna have a high risk for a stenosis as well. So intima hyperplasia. This is what we call the universal response of the vessels to the damage. And the damage is happening because what? Because the high pressure of the arterial side over the veins, okay? So um, if we do a Doppler right here on the venous side, you're gonna find some kind of uh, pulsatility as well. And that pulsatility has been transmitted from where? From the arterial side. So that's good to know. So the venous outflow is going to have this, this kind of pulsatility transmitted from the arterial side as well. So that's the, um, the anatomy and basically a little bit of hemodynamics and physiology for uh, this connection between one artery and one vein. So if you know this, we're fine. And this explains, um, you know, it explains the signs and symptoms that I told you before. Like for example, if you um, take the blood pressure down here on the arterial outflow, it makes sense. Blood pressure is just gonna be lower because remember the flow is taken where? It's taking the path of the fistula. So that's why you know, some patients are gonna have low pressure in determined segments of the arm, okay? So that one makes sense. And let me tell you something. There is a rule that says the following. If the fistula is closer to the heart, there will be more risk for congestive heart failure. So let me repeat this one more time. If the fistula is closer to the heart, there will be more chances for congestive heart failure. And it makes sense because remember, this is, a, this is a closed circuit right here. And if it's closer to the heart, the flow is just gonna go like in and out real quick. So mostly the heart that's gonna be in diastole, you know, it's just gonna be filling in more and more and more. So you're not gonna give time to the heart to do the normal cycle and the diastole and systole is just gonna, it's just gonna overload, that's the, that's the word. It's just gonna overload the heart and over time, the heart can, you know, develop this congestive heart failure. But that's a rule that you need to remember. So that's why um, one of the most common um, arterial venous fistulas 
uh, the doctors, surgeons, they do is basically uh, this one here, uh, the brachia semino, which is basically between the cephalic vein and the radial artery, so right here. That's one of the most common types. And this one is very distal. It's 